Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another edition of Turn One Conversation. Today, we are looking at a possibility of uh, having Switzerland as the, the only road and only route to, Ambas to Ambazonia's liberation. A lot of talks have come on, people have written, people have made confessions, others have developed a lot of information, which some have characterized as untrue and some have characterized as true. In the midst of this imbroglio, we've decided to have a conversation about this topic to see the merits and the demerits of using Switzerland as a means of mediation or as a means of getting out of the Amazonian War of Independence. On the panel with me today, we have a lady who's never been here before, and uh, she's a second lady on our program. You're welcome to the program, Abu Free. Thank you, Comrade Ben. Thank you for having me. And also, we have uh, some other person on the program who's never been here before. He's attempted to be here, but uh, his revolutionary duties have always kept him away. But finally, he's made it, and he is here with us today. You're welcome to the program, uh, Mr. Gorgi of FM. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the privilege to be here. Thank you. And finally, we have uh, the regular man, the man we see every day, the man who helps us understand the concepts, and the man who helps us understand the history of the Ambazonian Revolution. Welcome to the program, Barisa Thomas uh, Thank you for having me as a panelist. Thank you very much. Okay, let's dive straight into the issues. But before we look at Switzerland, uh, we received information over, over the last two weeks about the passing of Barista Bernard Muna. I never got to know Barista Muna personally, but I read a lot about him. And um, he's one of those people that have influenced the course of the history of Ambazonia. So uh, Barista Thomas Madden, maybe being the eldest on the panel, you might have known something about Barista Bernard Muna. Muna. Can, Can you pay a shot to him? Yeah, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that he passed away. In terms of our struggle, we will mm -hmm. always remember him as a gentleman the, who, on the day that uh, it was tough for the consulting of that station, he came out and said that we have to fight. That if we don't fight, are we expecting our children to fight? That if he was not almost 70 years, he would have been there fighting himself. So he said we can even lose two, three years of age of schooling to gain the country back. So he made some very powerful speech that day, which he will always be remembered for. So we thank him for that and we send condolences to his family. Thank you very much, Barista. Uh, let me keep up with uh, Mr. Kaji. Uh, as the right hand man to his Royal Majesty von Gordy Dinka, you must have you must have some deeper information about uh, Barrister Bernard and uh, his relationship with our revolution, and uh, the confession of the uh, of the testimony he made up station that Barrister Thomason has just made a uh, reference to is very very compelling. Do you believe that we are at that point that Barrister Bernard Muna uh, foresaw? that we need to sacrifice something in order to achieve something bigger? Uh, in fact, he made a very powerful statement uh, at that point. And that was very motivating. And uh, to most of the uh, people who that they, they were heading towards uh, the restoration of the statehood, and most of them were hanging out there thinking that they were demanding their rights within the context of the internal affairs of Cameroon. But uh, when he made that statement, uh, it came across uh, very clear that uh, they have to fight for, the, for themselves, fight for their rights. Uh, but those, in those terms, those rights were not clearly defined. They, they are defined, you know. But um, I would like to say that uh, uh, he has also played a great role in the Amazonia. Um, uh, if somebody one needs to reckon with, because uh, he has always been present in the political scenes in terms of. Uh, uh, he's been the bar president, and uh, he has been involved with uh, SDF. But uh, I, I will, with all respect, and you know, I will say that uh, one had expected more from such a personality than what he had offered for our revolution. One would have expected him to um, uh, to step up much more open and much more clear about uh, the issues which are which which uh, we deserve about the issues of restoration of our statehood 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gorgi. Uh, Abu Fri, <clears throat> the testimony or the statement that Barisa Bernard Muna made on that particular evening sends a message to the younger generation of uh, Amazonians. And uh, I may be wrong, but you represent this generation that may have their kids um, fighting someday if we, if we do not stand up for our rights. Uh, do you do you hold that statement from the Leonard Barrister at heart? And uh, are you trying to see how much uh, your kids or 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 the future generation may 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 not be brought into this war of independence? By the way, I don't know what you define as younger generation. I thought I'd pass that stage though, but. Um... <laughs> Um, absolutely. I think that is why most of us are, you know, um, currently in this struggle because we are, you know, fighting that um, we are in this struggle so that our children can be like stars above as it is in our, you know, our anthem. Um, absolutely. He made a great statement and the Monas family has been a huge influence in the history of Southern Cameroons. So at that point where he stood up and said, hey, we, we, we need to chart this struggle um, to make sure that our children um, you know, have a brighter future to, uh, tomorrow or the years to come. It's absolutely, he's absolutely, or he was absolutely correct. So yes, the, the younger generation definitely, we I personally definitely agree to that statement. We are fighting because we, we don't want our children to suffer or to be in a position where we are or where we were at, you know, while living in Southern Cameroon or where, you know, people are right now living in Southern Cameroon. So I totally, totally agree with him 100%. And um, may his um, gentle soul rest in peace. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of 101 Conversation, we extend our condolences to the Muna family and uh, we pay tribute uh, to the Leonard Barrister. Now, that is going to the topic of uh, our conversation today. We had to look at... Um, <clears throat> Switzerland. Uh, a lot has been said about Switzerland over the last few months and uh, some people are making a difference between exploratory talks, some are making a difference between uh, mediation, negotiation and uh, whatever is happening in Switzerland. It is not very clear to me and it may not be very clear to the rest of those who are watching us and the rest of Ambazonia. Um, as somebody who uh, attended the last session, Goji, can you explain to us in brief what is happening in Switzerland? Is it a mediation? Is it a pre-talk conference? Is it capacity building or is it negotiation? Uh, please help us understand what's happening there. Um, I would like to say all these issues which you have just called, they're all involved in that platform. I want to summarize this by saying that it is just a platform that has been created. The platform has not been, yet been completed. It's been created for the purpose of uh, possible dialogue negotiations or whatever. But it got to be a neutral platform where both parties to the conflict will be entitled to, uh, to set the agenda and not the, uh, the Swiss themselves. But the, both parties will be able to set the agenda, that it be for dialogue and the agendas and whatever. So, um, sometimes it's misunderstood in social media as if negotiations has, uh, has already commenced. No, nothing has happened. I've been there twice and nothing like negotiation is going on right now. What is happening is that the platform has been built and in addition to that, um, when you talk about capacity building, um, information has been disseminated all over the place and people have been informed about, pos about uh, possible steps. People have been advised. That's what is involved in this capacity building. It's something that you can take it or you leave it, or you look for your own independent advisor or independent um, uh, capacity builder. And that is how the situation looks like. All right. Let me, let, let me follow up with you. <clears throat> I remember after the very first uh, session you attended in Switzerland, yes. uh, you did not sign on to the, to the process. But after the second session, you signed up to the, to the process. What changed between the first and the second sessions? Well, um, the Repos Republic of Amazonia, I was representing the uh, Republic of Amazonia, that from from uh, the most important thing that caused me not to, uh, what, what triggered me not to, uh, to sign on to the initiative, was that if, in the first place I went there for fact finding, because uh, the information that I requested from the Swiss government and the, from the uh, Human Humanitarian Dialogue Center, they were not answered directly, but I was, promised that uh, when I get there, some of those questions will be, will be answered. 
because there are issues that they need to hold under they have under non-disclosure agreements and things that they need to, to, to meet one on one in order to expose them. So I went through the first session, it was not substantial enough, the questions were not substantially answered enough. On the second session, as I said, it was a continuous finding process. On the second session, um, the issue of being the internal affair of Cameroon, which was a great concern about uh, the decision I lead in that report, uh, which, uh, which I put after the first meeting, that issue uh, is slowly being redressed. And then very, very important is that, uh, you know, that's, that's why you see the formation of this act, Ambazonian coalition team. It is now talking about a country that is going to represent, that's the team that's going to represent, for example, the, uh, if in case of dialogue, in case of negotiation, whatever the case is, but we are now have, we're having our identity right in there. There are right issues was whether there was a mandate from the uh, Cameroon government or not. And, uh, you see, uh, there's no better mandate than when you can bring Cameroon on that table. That's how, that's how I view it. Cameroon, right. give you I, I, will, I will follow, I will follow up with you uh, briefly after this. Uh, let me, let me switch over to Barista Thomas and Madden. <clears throat> um, all viewers and uh, observers of the Ambassador Revolution are aware that you are pre preparing, um, a very solid case uh, that you uh, from which you've been declassifying some information are you preparing that case in function to what is happening in switzerland or you are preparing the case in function to something you may still be thinking about no we are preparing we are assuming that sooner or later whether today or tomorrow will end up sitting on the table with la republic to cameroon so we are preparing our position paper which we will submit. It might be in Switzerland, we will be ready already. We've written some So it's like a book. We are going to present, if it is Switzerland, which ends up with the final destination, we will present there. If it is USA, we will present there. But two parties, it's either La Republic du Cameroon or uh, and against Ambazonia. But I have twisted the case that no, it's not La Republic du Cameroon against Ambazonia. It, it is La Republic du Cameroon against Ambazonia representing itself and representing the 64 nations that voted for its independence. Because people put their vote that this place should be independent and the vote has been stolen. Their vote was counted, but it's not being allowed to count on the ground. So that's the way I'm putting it, that we are coming to represent ourselves and represent 64 countries that voted for us in this mediation. Any of the countries, if you don't want us to represent you, then you can write to the mediation or write to us and remove our name there. But in law, if you are coming in a representative capacity, it's only the people that you represent that can say, no, you don't represent us. The open and Republic cannot tell us not to represent us because they don't have any interest between me, uh, uh, us and the people. So we are preparing a generic document. It will be submitted wherever. The location is immaterial. All right. Thank you very much for that input. Uh, Abu Free, <clears throat> it is on record and it's public knowledge that the Ambazona Governing Council is not part of the Swiss-led initiative. Why is the Ambazona Governing Council keeping out of this initiative? Um, thank you, um, Comrade Bernard. Um, no disrespect to your program, but I just think that we have um, talked a lot about this Swiss initiative um, thing that it, you know, it's kind of redundant. But um, to answer your question, um, so the Humanitarian Meeting Dialogue Center um, reached out to me. Um, by then, I was the um, press secretary of the leader of the Amazonian Governing Council, Dr. Ayabacho Lucas. So they reached out to me wanting to have a meeting with, um, with SIC and um, but also I, you know, had my discussions with them, made sure I did my research on, you know, what um, the HD is all about, what they are doing. And because they came, you know, um, on the guise of um, uh, wanting to mediate in the issues happening in um, uh, between Southern Cameroon and uh, La Republic to Cameroon. So, you know, Patrick did explain to me a couple of things, which I took back to my, to, to, to seek and, um, did assign myself and the P, uh, sorry, myself, the spokeslady, 
um, which is I'm about Cecilia and the National Security Advisor, which is um, Grace Ajeli, to um, have a meeting with them. Um, now, from our meeting that we have with, um, with, with HD, which was represented by a guy, Patrick, um, and another lady, Constance, I, I don't remember their last names anyways, but Patrick named, you know, he did name several groups and people that he has spoken with um, or reached out to in reference to, you know, to this peace treaty that he was talking about. And one of those, I mean, a couple of those people, he had Atangaji, um, Colonel Badek, and, you know, several people within the La Republic, um, uh, within La Republic. And um, he, he said that, he said a whole couple of things, you know, mentioned the fact that um, Badek had, had agreed that you know um, there is a whole lot of issues happening and um, it's kind of difficult to eradicate the the rebels as as they had earlier thought and, and things like that. So one of the things that caught our attention while we were talking with Patrick was we had asked him a particular question about Southern Cameroons. We wanted to know if he had any history or if he knew anything with regards to Southern Cameroons, how Southern Cameroons came about. You know, he did not. He actually gave us some vague statement about, you know, I'm sure earlier he went and read though, but he gave us some vague and um, un very unreliable, untruthful history about Southern Cameroons, him and his um, uh, assistant that were there. And from what we understood, these people were coming to us to broker a deal. Oh, well, they were inviting us. And at the same time, they had a stance, they already had a stance from our um, understanding based on that discussion. And their stance was, um, because we had asked them, what do you think about, uh, um, you know, and it was a very technical question that we asked these guys, what do you think about Southern Cameroon's, um, you know, independence or uh, a recognition of, you know, the, the, the statehood of Southern Cameroon's? And he was like, well, you know, I, I don't think that it's going to be very feasible. We think federation is the best option. Um, and I mean, he gave all, all these nice things about why federation is good and all that. So we ended the meeting, took the meeting back to the leadership of the Ag of C, where that's where the leadership of the Ag of C, um, you know, we, we, we sat there and we agreed that we already know the stance of HD. You know, they are not um, coming for the benefit of the, the people of Southern Cameroons, but for the benefit of the Republic of Cameroon and we serve that um, uh, connection. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, let me follow up Let me follow up with you. You yes. said they reached out to you and uh, you realized along the line that they they uh, had the interest of La Republic of Cameroon at heart and uh, they were ready to defend that interest. Did you actually, did they actually tell you that they are working for a federation or they are working for a peace deal? Because having an opinion is one thing and uh, having and mediating a process is another. So that was his opinion. So let me thank you for, for, for bringing that up. So that was Patrick's opinion. Um, and it's probably wrong for me to say it was an, you know, the opinion of the HD. But again, he's representing an organization, right? So if you have that opinion based on um what you your assessment on on because he had gone to yaoundé and spoken to all these people if you have that opinion based on your contact with all these people in yaoundé and partially well he said he had also spoken with some you know southern camera well we call them enablers these days um he had spoken to some of those people and based on that his analysis he thinks that you know um federation will be the best option for 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 the, the country of, of cameroons so it was his personal opinion, but again, he represents HD. So, all right, thank you. Let, let me follow up with uh, with Mr. Gorgi. Um, <clears throat> in one of uh, international crisis groups reports, they actually said Switzerland is for regionalism in Cameroon. That's the Cameroon they defined was both Ambazonia and La Republic of Cameroon. Throughout the capacity building process uh, in Switzerland. Um, do you think uh, have 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 has a humanitarian dialogue come out with any any shed of opinion as if that is what they want to happen in uh between La Republic and uh, Ambazonia? No, that is to the best of my knowledge that has not, never happened. Um, I also had a conversation with Patrick uh, before I was invited to that place. I was very critical. I'm very critical up to today about uh, 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 you know where we are heading to, but. Um, I, as a nationalist, 
And uh, I know exactly the legal justification for our statehood. I know uh, that you can take me anywhere you want to take me to. You are not going to change the position which the stands for. We are one of the strongest. If we talk about the uh, nationalists, who talk about um, uh, the independence of um, uh, restoring the statehood of Azuna. Um, the Republic of Azuna, the cabinet of the Republic of Azuna is quite aware of the details and what is going on in the Swiss initiative. That I want to say this. Um, uh, the Swiss government and the HD are also learning a lot. In the formal meeting, they were able to learn more about our history and to learn more details about what they don't know about. The legal justification cases that we have, we have won in courts were presented to them from my, from my perspective. And uh, there's, I see there's the people, everyone is in the learning process. And I want to say that they don't know how the outcome is going to be. It is building a platform and uh, we are not bound by any contract. We are not buy by any legal agreement on, on, that, on that platform. If there is an intention to deviate uh, the restoration of our state to take us to another direction, uh, simply walk out, period. There's nothing, I have nothing to lose being there, but I am there to, um, uh, to, to, to see that um, we can restructure the, that, that platform and make it suit the, the, the wish of the, of the Amazonian people. Make sure that the, the restoration quest which we have been demanding for be represented in that platform. Whether it's happening in the enemy's house or where is it happening? The issue is that uh, the enemy is not going to change my narrative. It's not going to change who I am. It's not going to divert me from my... Let me, let me get, uh, let me, let me get some, something out of you. So what is happening in Switzerland? Is it capacity building? Are you building a capacity of, of the humanitarian dialogue since you are learning a lot about the history right. of Australia from you? <laughs> is that what you are doing? No, let me explain this to you. Uh, the Republic of Australia has already done capacity building in this, in this direction, long time. I don't up to now. We already we know exactly where we stand, and uh, we know the details of our territory, the national boundaries, uh, resources, everything. We have them in details, complete details. We have done so, what, are you, what are you doing in Switzerland now with them? So, the, the issue is that the purpose of, as I said it before, the purpose of the Swiss initiative is to build a platform where possible dialogue between Cameroon and Ambazonia can take place or negotiation, whatever um, form of dialogue that is going to be manifested on, the, on, that, on that platform. That is the purpose of, of, of the Swiss initiative. So we have to set the agenda together. And, and uh, it's not uh, somebody, it's not them setting the agenda for us. They will not arrive any decision for us. It's out of question. All right, thank you. Uh, Barrister, uh, Goja just said something that is uh, quite a, a little bit intriguing to me. Right. He says, uh, Switzerland, they are there for capacity building. And what I'm wondering is, why should Switzerland be so interested in this? Do you have any idea why Switzerland should be interested in this, in building the, in building the capacity of uh, Amazonas capacities? No, it is standard practice. When you have a state party who is in uh, going into international mediation with non-state parties, the various people, there are so many people, they try to bring them together. What they are doing is there's buy-in. If the leaders don't accept the process, you waste your time there. It will not change anything on the ground. So I was thinking they are bringing all the leaders of the non-state party so that both of all of them can come together and accept the process, understand my, the my, process, my, accept my, it, and then my, before they my, start. But so my question is this: Why should Switzerland be interested in this? Or let me put it the other way around: Why would Switzerland initiate this and be taking it up to this level? Why I, I don't, are you asking why HD is interested or why Switzerland? Why is because HD is different from Switzerland? HD is why, being paid for its why, services. Why HD, HD is being paid for its HD is being paid for its services. By if who? it's somebody who have got a client, Canada is putting money. You think HD is spending all its waste? It's doing all that for free. They are going to build the Canada or whoever is the sponsor of this. They are desperate to break down and they lose their client, lose their business. They are negotiating so many different places. They have so many clients. If you have a client, would you allow the business to collapse? You do everything to keep the business going. So the money is coming from Canada. They are paying air tickets, hotel bills, paying HD to do the business. They are, they are an entity. They have a, they're working for money. That's my understanding. All right, so if that one answers your question, why is this? Let's say you something that uh, I think I think only Goji can clarify us about that in here. Goji, did they, did uh, did uh, humanitarian dialogue tell you people who is sponsoring this and why the person is sponsoring this? Um, 
we understand that the Canadian government is also involved. I understand that uh, uh, there's, there's a possibility that the Swiss government is involved. But what I want to, to, to redirect is this. Um, whatever person is involved, whether it is the Canadian government or is the Swiss government is involved in sponsoring the process, whatever intention they may have, <laughs> It's not going to change the agenda of our restoration as simple as that. We have we have okay, a before before before, before, we, go to that, before yeah. we go to that before we go to that I, I I just want us to be a little bit clear. Do you know who is in who is sponsoring this and why the person is sponsoring this? At least you should be able to know why it is being sponsored, so that at the end of the day you may not be caught up. So humanitarian dialogue center, for example, humanitarian dialogue center. What does that say? They are. Um, Engage all over the world in uh, getting involved in conflicts to find resolutions. That is what they say they are. That's what's in their memorandum of uh, uh, whatever they have put out there as the purpose for which they were created. And uh, whichever government is coming in is going to tell you that we want to find peace all over the world. That's the purpose we are creating. That's why we are sponsoring this this um, this procedure. That's what the Canadian government will tell you. But um, uh, I don't see any other reason that somebody will tell you whether they are right, or whether they are sincere. What they're doing is another question, right? So uh, the question you're asking right now is not, it's not for me to get into the heart of, 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 uh, of, of the respective government. But the, the issue is there that the Swiss um, uh, constitution stands for seeking for peace all over the world. That is one of the issues that are in their constitution. And so they use that as a pretext for engaging in this kind of conflicts and uh, looking for resolutions or looking for, 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 for how to solve the, uh, the conflict between both parties. So that is what they tell you and that's what I'm going to tell you. So I, I, am, I, am a bit I am a little bit critical about this because um, when you look at the civil society uh, world, where people work in civil society, most of those organizations raise their funds from funders. But at the same time, they are very critical and very selective about the people that fund the organizations. This is because, as we say in Africa, he who pays the piper determines the tune. Let me follow up with Abu Free. Did when HD came to you, did HD tell you who was why or who gave them the first reason to come into this and who was going to sponsor the process? No, they did not. Um, but before I come back to your question and answer that, I just wanted to come with um Goji cards. So there is now I I, I do understand that this is not a multi-dimensional process, right? Um now from what I, from, from my understanding, based on the things I've read so far, or the videos and um, audios that I've listened to, especially the recent one that came from um, comrade um, John Bakuro, um, he stated that uh, one of the, you all had signed or mandated this, uh, the Swiss government to go ahead and um, do this process, well, to be the sole negotiators, or however you want to call it, um, capacity builders to be the sole capacity builders or negotiators of this process um how is it that, so how is canada's or what is canada's role at this at this current stage let me let me let me cut in here i am i am the sole i am the only person who's going to ask questions on this on this platform and uh, you answer the questions i'm okay. sorry yeah yeah i just had to follow up with him on that though so um okay so what was my question <laughs> my question my question was at the time when HD came to Egg of C, did HD, did HD tell Egg of C whether they are being sponsored by someone or the interest they had in mediating this or who contacted them to mediate this? Because I understand at some point the Egg of C sent a request, a formal request to uh, the Swiss government to help mediate between Ambazonia and the La Republic of Cameroon. So, how, what brought the HD and can you clarify us on on what um, the I don't know about the the egg of C sending a formal request um I, I I didn't I didn't know about that part um but from what our discussion with Patrick it was um he came to us and um, he didn't mention the Swiss government at that at that point um so he told us that they are trying to bridge you know the the situation that is happening between um in in Amazonia and in, in southern Cameroon and that um Patrick, who, who was the person we were talking with, said he had gone to Ground Zero or to Yaoundé, and he had spoken with all these people in the in the in the government, including Atanganji Paul and the rest, as well as um, people like um, um, Barista Bala, and um, I think he had spoken as well to um, Kadina Tumi. 
And um, so that was the information that he gave us, that they were just trying to bring peace to, um, 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 uh, you know, uh, Southern Cameroon, Southern Republic to Cameroon. And never, ever mentioned Swiss government, never, ever mentioned that um, the Southern Cameroonian had reached out to them as well. All right. Um, can, I, can I just add something to what you just said, please? Yes, yes, very briefly. Um, what I'm just about to say is that uh, this information was obtained when in my first visit. That was the first time I went there. That information was not given to me on telephone or on uh, any form of writing when Patrick was con con contacted us as well. So when I went in there, uh, you find out there is more information you can get in there than rather than getting it out because they, they see this uh, the, there's a possibility to jeopardize the entire um, situation or the entire process if information is being sent out anyhow, I just put the information anyhow there out there in the social media. So uh, there are a lot of information which I got in there which I could not get outside, which helped to, to, to give me a better understanding of uh, who they are or what they're doing and, and what is going on. And uh, it, it does not, um, I, I rather want to advise that it's better to come in and see what is going on there. You can come in as an observer, observer status, and you, you are not committed to any signing or anything. Right? That's how we yeah. went in, observer, simple. Uh, you, you, are, you are giving me, you are giving me the, the impression that we could, uh, the Republic of Ambazonia could just decide to attend Paul Bia's dialogue as an observer because nothing was going to change in there. Is that, that's, is that, that's not uh, Paul Bia's dialogue. Please, I don't, that's Paul Bia's, this is not, this is not within the context of the internal affairs of Cameroon. This is not within the context of the dialogue that Paul Bia called for, right? Uh, I want to make it very crystal clear. Before we went in there, I made my submissions. You read those submissions. They are very clear where we stand and where we are standing. Moving into the enemy's house does not change what, what I'm talking about. I can go in there and tell, tell them what I stand for. It doesn't change what, 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 I, what, I, what I stand for. So um, attending a dialogue, let me tell you this. If, if, uh, if, if there's a possibility to attend a dialogue, even uh, where I find that the security is, 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 is covered, I will move in there and tell them exactly about the restoration of my statement. I will have the opportunity or the platform to expose them. So it doesn't move me for one, one inch. It doesn't change my, my view for one inch. So I don't All see right. any white people are scared going in there. There's All nothing right. there. You can quit anytime you want to quit. You you Comrade, people have to be scared. Abdul Karim just got uh, arrested for going there. Yeah, Abdul we are going to get, yeah, yeah, for sure. Barista, when it comes to issues of negotiations and uh, mediation, is there any standard procedure that the parties should expect to be clarified at a very basic level before they take the next steps? Oh, there is nothing like a hard and fast rule. A mediation is not something like litigation where you have procedures of court and the rest. This thing is something which they are trying to bring two parties together and see the way they can try to resolve their problem. A lot of the things are not standard. Yes, a lot of people do it this way, but there is no hard and fast rule that must be done in one way or another. Okay. So you need a bit of accommodation here and there. It's not really, it's not a court case. Also. So there should be a bit of negotiation, um, give and take here and there. On a, on a freeze point that this Patrick guy didn't know about the story and the rest of our history or our, our case, I'm not too bothered to be honest. I don't, the subject matter, I don't expect the mediator coming and already knowing the subject matter before even coming. Exactly. Secondly, this Patrick guy might be an admin. It's a technical problem. Okay, I think I think Boris Boris has off the hook. But before before Boris before Boris comes back in, um, let me follow up with you, uh, Abu Free. <clears throat> Did the Egg of Sea refuse the whole project entirely, or do they want certain procedural flaws to be fixed and then they can join the process? Absolutely. The, with... <laughs> So the Egg of Sea did not refuse the process entirely. The Egg of Sea, um, at that point that we sent that letter, our concern was that HD did not have the people of Southern Cameroon's interest at heart. 
our understanding based on our discussion with them was that they were more working or more connected with the republic side of the, the the negotiation or the peace treaty that they were they were you know proposing but if they are coming to negotiate a peace treaty what, what why would you want them to have the interest of ambazonia at heart they should be coming for a particular purpose no uh, well let me put it this way neutrality so they were coming they were coming and telling us that now if you if you're sitting in a meeting with somebody that comes like in, you know in the sense that we are trying to negotiate a peace treaty or we are trying to negotiate between two camps but at the same time they are telling you that the other side that federation will be or may be the better choice at hand again this was patrick's opinion i'm not saying that this is the opinion of hd this was patrick's opinion so we were basing our assessment or basing our response to hd on patrick's assessment right so if you're coming and telling me we are seeking for a restoration of a statehood or independence and then you're coming and telling us that well maybe federation will be a better choice it's going to be so difficult to have you know independence what do you expect us to do you convince him why you should have independence. You should convince him why you need that independence and, and why you deserve the independence. Is that and, who said it, and who said we didn't? We did. By backing out? Well, see, one of the things that we have always, you know, and, and the leader of the, the Ambazonian Governing Council has always said is that we, Ambazonians, we are not ready because we have to negotiate negotiate from a position of strength at this point in time ambazonians still are not ready to negotiate and that is why you see all the swiss um uh, the swiss leaders or the swiss uh, the leaders going in for the swiss negotiation they don't even know if la republic has even given their own mandate la republic has given a verbal mm -hmm. mandate to make to, to to this process and how does that bind La Republic? It doesn't because it is verbal, you know. So we need to be able to negotiate from a position of strength. And the leader of the Ambazonian uh, Governing Council says we are not ready. We are not ready. Let us strengthen ourselves, strengthen our forces on the ground, and then we get on that negotiation table. Thank you. Uh, let me get let me get to Gorgi about uh, about this other point that you have just raised. Gorgi, do you think there is a possibility of this? Um, process in Switzerland being just another attempt at satisfying ourselves and satisfying the international community because we are not yet at a point where we can forcefully argue our case and uh, and uh, ensure that the Swiss-led process enforces the outcome of the decision? The Republic of Amazonia believes that Amazonia is at the position of the maximum strength. The strength that we have is a legal justification for our statehood and Cameroon is doing everything to avoid a confrontation with us mm -hmm. based on the on, on 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 sitting on the table and let us lay or lay down or lay out all the legal justifications for independence constitutionality from where we started that's so what, what is are, going to bring what is going what, to make Cameroon come to the table now excuse me let me say this that's why they're provoking a war so that we will get ourselves involved only in the war area and then the area of of dialogue between us and them that they are going to be exposed will never come on the table. So let me say, tell you this. Um, we of the Republic of Zonia, we already have, we have been in this revolution since 84. We have complete details of our territory. Every need, every every dot, we have total international boundaries. We know our maritime space, we know our we know everything about Amazonia. We know the resources, the amount of resources we have. We know we have done our independent assessment. With, uh, with specialists, special firms which have been out there for us. We, have, we, we are very confident when we sit on the table because nobody can wait. Right. When, when, when it comes to the legal arguments of the Ambazonian uh, quest for independence, I am convinced that it is a, a, a clear pass in any legal, in any forum. If we sit to talk face to face with Cameroon, okay. it's a very clear pass. Now, my question is since 1984 till today, why has that legal justification not brought la republic to the table absolutely that's exactly the point it's not the legal justification that brings la republic to the table and what i'm saying is that they are avoiding to come on the table because of the legal justification we have right but then now we have the legal justification how will they come to the table 
You, you, you no, said that's, our strongest, uh, that's the strongest weapon we have. How what that bring to the table? For example, example? if in case the uh, uh, the Swiss initiative transform to the right platform, while it's being built right now, the, the platform is being uh, developed. If we transform transform to the right platform that we have, we have the opportunity to present a legal justification for our restoration of our state right in there. That's what that's what Cameroon has been avoiding for all these years to have a face to face confrontation with us. I would, I would I would pick it I will pick it up with you. But there is something I want you to clarify, but let me pick let me get up with Barista. Sorry, we lost you, Barista. Yeah, but, sorry, I just came back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. So um, in one of his outings, John Ba Akuro was very clear that multi-party uh, negotiation, mediation talks is better than a, a unilateral party talks. And uh, he made us understand that those who had signed up to the Swiss process had signed up to appoint a unique party to mediate in this, and that is uh, Switzerland. Is that not a danger? On, is that not danger on the Cameroonian side, as uh, journalists will say? Uh, is that not danger on the Ambazonian side? No, I believe uh, it would be better if we have a multi-party. If we, first of all, we are trying to internationalize our problem as much as possible. So even having more than one country involved there as mediators or whatever, it's far better. That is one of the options we have. But Switzerland, without BIA being involved in Switzerland, Switzerland would have been ideal because if you look at them, Switzerland did not vote in the vote of 21st of April 1961. So they are neutral in that sense. If you go and check Norway, Norway voted for our independence. If you go and check the US, they voted for our independence. So one way or another, these guys are already parties in this thing in that way. You voted for this guy. France and some other countries voted against our independence. The Republic voted against. So you are coming to mediate in a case where you've already voted for the independence of this guy. They can say you are interested party. But Swiss alone have been nice because there is no, they didn't vote. Their name is not there. So that would have been a plus for Swiss alone that they are a neutral party. But because of other reasons, we are being involved there. People are doubting their impact. It have been better for more than one uh, mediator to be there. Uh, on the issue that they sign a document to say they will only be the single mediator, as I said, these people are raising funds HD. If you see where you raise your funds and do your things, do you want to start sharing the cake with so many people? They were blocking that thing so that they should be the one to do this business. But if we insist, maybe they will open up and bring more people in if they realize that the but, system but, is not but, 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 but if we are going to a process at the very beginning, and we say, okay, we are giving you all the rights and we're not going to bring any other person because we think that um, that uh, humanitarian dialogue is not willing to share and this, this is a business, business that they are yeah. into. It, 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 does that connote any, any sense of justice and equity for the people of Ambazonia? What? <clears throat> Sorry, I don't understand. What equity and justice for people of Ambazonia? If we decided to give the right, negotiation rights unilaterally to uh, humanitarian dialogue because they are raising their funds and this is their business and uh, they want to do it without any other person. Are we working towards justice for the Amazonian people? No, the problem, we, I, I, I believe it was a mistake to give that type of blank check, but you can always say that, oh, we signed that document without the capacity being built. After you built our capacity, that's why we now understand the process. We cannot go without with you alone. We were talking from ignorance. You will not build our capacity. You should have built our capacity first. We are in a better position to judge, and then we sign a document. This so they me. can always argue themselves out of it. But let me let me let me pick up from that. So how would you qualify the act of political leaders going to sign such a document? I con uh, I consider very very important without without an expert advice. Was that putting the cart before the horse? To be honest, if you go in, even when you are going for a court case, there's pre-trial conference, you have different conference. People always go there. Most of the time you go with your lawyer right at the beginning to make sure that things are to your favor. If you go there and say, oh, the trial has not started, let me like the uh, plaintiff or me like the defendant, let me go and arrange my things. Then when the proper trial starts, I will bring in my experts. That I think it might be a mistake. But let's not dwell too much on the mistakes that have been done already. 
you cannot bring back the clock. Let's the reason, keep pushing the reason, the reason, let's correct them and move ahead. The reason we should dwell on certain yeah. mistakes is because certain mistakes can be fixed now before we take uh, a long road and uh, because at some times certain mistakes are unable to fix uh let me pick up with you Ama, <clears throat> amagoji when you I something to, can i to say something please i i would i am i am i am coming to you abu free uh mr goji when you i i are you for the fact that this blank check was given to humanitarian dialogue to do this unilaterally on behalf of the swiss um, uh, you were talking about documents that were signed do you have a copy of those documents that were signed? Or, or do you know the context in which it was signed? I don't know whether you have any 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 example out there because it is this, this um, uh, issue is being wrongly interpreted into the public, right? Um, as I say, the Swiss. Uh, Gorgi, 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 give give me one second before you before you continue. Are we together? Okay, we are together. Yeah, we are together. Okay. If we do not have these documents at our disposal, whose fault is it that we are poorly informed? Is it my fault? Please hold on, hold on, please, Abed. Is it my fault that the person who is representing me somewhere... My volume has just gone down. I don't know what is wrong. We are hearing you loud and clear. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, but I, was, I, have to stretch, I have to stretch. Go ahead. Okay. So, my question is, you have asked if we have seen those documents. I have not seen any, any of those documents. I have not seen any documents coming out of Switzerland. But now my question is, the person who is representing me in Switzerland has signed a document without me knowing what is in that document. Whose fault is it? My fault or the fault of the person signing? Um, you are talking about fault. If you have to see the content in which the document was signed, and uh, you, have to, uh, um, you, have to, you have to understand what was signed, before you put everything out there, whether it's, it's a fault or it's not a fault. If we don't have any document here, we are talking about a document that has been signed. We are giving the public a, a, mis, a, mis, a misconception about what has been done in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. You see, Swiss government... Remember, remember uh, we are putting the, the, the HG, who was in this process it's, on the... It's not, it's, not a, it's, not, um, uh, it's not like they say it's an umpire or a referee that's going to say, oh, give you a red card, give you a yellow card for doing, doing this fault. No. It's, I see people compare it with a referee or, or what they call an umpire it, it, it gives you sanctions, it can pull out two points from you. They are, they are not going to play that role. They are not going to play the role of a judge. Right? The, the, the issue is that they have to play the platform, to prepare the platform, and then the, for the parties to come in and set the agenda. As simple as that, we, the mandate which is given to them is to go ahead and prepare the platform. The mandate is not for them to, 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 to be uh, the referee or the umpire between Amazonia and, and, and Cameroon. Then I am not here. I am not very clear there. Please, please, in one word, what is the role of the humanitarian dialogue? Are they a mediator or are they a negotiator or are they a referee or are they a teacher? One word describing them, just one word. Who, what? No, you cannot, you cannot say one word, please. Um, you see, um, it, it's, it's a process that uh, it, it's, you cannot say it's just one word, no. Um, you, you, you see, they are preparing. Just understand that there's a, a platform which is being prepared. On that platform, dialogue can take place depending on the parties, what agenda the parties will set on that platform. Negotiation can take place if the parties agree that they want to negotiate. Anything can take place on that platform. Even the movement of internally displaced persons, agreements can take place on that platform for the movement of internally displaced persons for uh, uh, relief organizations to move within Abuja freely in certain areas that they don't have access to. Anything can take place, but depending if both parties agree on that. It is not something that you are going to say that they are this or they are that. They have to create a platform, and we are building that platform. The platform is not yet finished, and we are still working on building the platform. And that's why we, uh, the process needs all nationalist Amazonians to come on board and set the platform to suit the agenda of the, for the Amazonian people, and not to, to, uh, to, to stay behind and be watching for social media. Come in there, criticize, change things. I've been one of the strongest critics out there, they know. And I presented okay. documents, legal um, justifications, and other issues which have helped also to change and divert the direction in which the platform is going. Let me say, I for example, if at some point they have an, an agenda which is different from the agenda of the Amazonian people, uh, Masa, there's nothing we are going to do there. We, we, we will have to I, am, I am still not very clear, uh, Gorgi, on what I am still not very clear because you said they are not an umpire. At that point, you at least had one word you could describe them for not being. 
they are not an umpire. So on the other side, you should have been able to tell us if they're a teacher, a mediator, a facilitator. But before that, let me pick up, let me pick up with Abu Fri, who has become so impatient. Uh -huh. Comrade Bernard, uh, uh, let, me, let me respond, please, before you ask me a question. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me let, let me let, let me take you with a different question altogether. My my question to you is this: So far, we have not seen or heard La Republic make a statement as being a party to that process in Switzerland. But what we have read on social media from people like Comrade Bohabert, who are uh, the proponents of that dialogue is they have brought La Republic down to the table. So are you at the egg of sea still very comfortable sitting out of there while those who are in there are uh, asserting the fact that La Republic is La Republic is afraid of the table? Meanwhile, they engaged this from the very beginning. La Republic is not on the table. La Republic is not on it. They did not engage this. I don't know if you all are trying to say that John Bakuro is making up things. Um, he was actually at the start of this thing. So he is making up things. I'm, no, no, no. I'm just saying. No, no, no. I'm just you know. I'm, I'm making assumptions here. Uh, you know, because he made a statement. Clearly made a statement the other day, saying that um, Dr. Sako was the person that sent out uh, you know a letter one of the well i guess when this before this protest process actually started dr sako sent out a letter to the swiss um, um ambassador in, in yaoundé um asking for you know some their intervention in the in the situation going on la republic has not given us a mandate a written mandate this ambassador when this thing started this ambassador went to um you know uh, uh, mr bim Vondo, the octogenarian idiot went to him and asked if they were gonna, you know, um, affirm the process to go on. And he gave his verbal years. That is not ground, like, you know, that, that is not binding enough. You cannot give a verbal yes on a situation like this and think that these people will, will see through. We all know La Republic. We know these people. So we cannot base our, you know, whatever we are trying to do on the fact that La Republic gave a verbal yes so the negotiation is gonna happen. Hell no. So, um, comrade Gojika, uh, let me tell you something. I'm gonna be kind of this is <laughs> based on what you said with regards to is southern Cameroon so Amazonians. Are we ready? We are not ready, my brother. We are not ready. Whatever this political, these leaders are engaging is called political masturbation. I'm gonna call it that because we don't have a leverage on Cameroon. You Akwanga, Bo Herbert, Sako, your um, your group, you nobody has a leverage on on on, on Cameroon or Paul Biat to even think that this discussion is gonna hold, you know, hold. It's not gonna work. So at this point in time, I will continue to say that we are still not ready at this point. And that is why we at the AGOF C ADF, we keep on insisting, I'm our boys on ground zero. That is where your independence will come from. Stop relying on these diplomacies at this point in time. Before I pick up, uh, I would. I, 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 I would request, before I pick up, I would request Abu Free that uh, some uh, adjectives are not very proper for the purposes of this of this platform. Um, uh, let me go to Barisa before I come to before I come to Goji. Goji, is your is your speaker already okay? Yes, I'm. I'm hearing you. I'm. I'm really. I'm uh, stretching, but it's okay. Okay, let me let me go to Barista. Uh, Barista, since the Swiss initiative started, and uh, you are observing the political terrain, especially coming from La Republic, uh, has their reaction to issues shown some kind of uh, some kind of recognition of an international uh, of an international something that could be that could be m moving towards peace or towards resolving this uh, this issue? Uh, your question is a strange one because first, La Republic du Cameroon, I ask, I ask their, their, interest, their interest is to claim that this problem is a domestic one. That is a domestic issue and they have domestic remedies to solve the problem. Well, that secondly, they have their population, even if they are involving themselves, they might be hiding it. La Republic not showing their hand. They might have given something to these Swiss people or they might have said, but, but we don't even know because the information has not come out. La Republic du Cameroon is a very tricky character. Until you get something 
plain. You can never know where they stand. But to me, the, the UN has mentioned the process. Canada has mentioned US. Yes, everybody has mentioned. Even if they had not given their go ahead or whatever, the pressure from the diplomatic environment might exactly. put them to end up coming in. So I would, I'm supporting Ayaba and his group to keep insisting and asking for everything they are asking. But I don't believe we should jettison the process also, the, pro the whole Swiss project. They should try, yes, this issue has been raised, that issue has been raised, you try to keep curing them. Maybe you will reach a critical mass somewhere where the system now is capable of being used. That's the way me I see it. But I don't blame Ayaba or anybody who's boycotting the process now because people cannot go into things they are not comfortable with. I was talking to, I wrote on one person's platform that if, I, uh, if Sarko uh, and uh, Buhebet and the rest, if they believe they are capable of continuing the Swiss process, let them continue with it. But if they know that they cannot continue without Ayaba and Siseko, then let them go to Ayaba and Siseko and try to solve the thing and, and give the answers they are looking for. Go ahead without them if you can. If you cannot, go and meet them and let their problems be solved. To me, it's very simple. There is no need complaining. Can you go ahead without Ayaba and Siseko and the rest? The answer is no. Therefore, go to Ayaba and Siseko them and solve the problem they have. If they believe we cannot solve the problem they've raised, then the process cannot go ahead. If these guys had a way of going ahead without this people, they would have done that, don't it? So I think we have to look at what Ayaba and the rest are saying. Whatever issues they've raised, they have to look at it and see. If their problem is a mandate from Cameroon, let the Swiss produce the mandate. Can I add something to that? Thank you very much. Can I add something to Comrade Tumasang's point? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, and, and just to add to what you said, um, Comrade Tumasang, and I just want to make it clear that, you know, Dr. Ayaba or the AGOC um, leadership or ADF leadership, all those combined, is not in any way against the Swiss process. No, what they are saying is that we need to strengthen the process, make sure that we bring in um, a mediator that is neutral. You know, we bring in, we have experts on the on the board to discuss on our behalf. Let me tell, I mean, I, I'm sure you all know what Switzerland or who Switzerland is. You, Switzerland is an occupier. You have occupiers and then you have masters of the occupier, right? Switzerland is, is uh, <laughs> not, let me not say Switzerland is our occupier. La Republic is our occupier. Switzerland is the master of the occupier. Right, so Switzerland is the master of La Republic, and Switzerland, in, in my point of view, is not different in any way from France. Switzerland houses the wealth of beer and all members of La Republic du Cameroon, officials, ministers, all those people, and all of all these corrupt African leaders. They house their wealth. See, our our emasculated leaders. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to call it that. <laughs> All this, you cannot go to, to the master to free them from the occupier. How does that even make sense? It's like we are going, I mean, since we all are familiar with what France is or what France has, you know, done on the, you know, in, in, in West Africa or in it, you cannot go to the, to the master to free you from the occupier. How does that even make sense? So our, our objective is that we are the AGOC, the ADF, the Sisiku camp, let us look for experts. Let us look for people that are not directly involved with La Republic, right? And have them on board. We are not against the Swiss. They can go on with the Swiss process, but we will show our support when it's genuine, when it looks like, okay, this thing is good. And we also are at the position of strength. That's all. Uh, Thank you very much. Let me, let me pick up with Goji. Goji, um, you have made an elaborate case about the capacity building in Switzerland. Please, can, can I just answer one of the uh, issues that was raised by, uh, by our sister? Okay, answer uh, that one first. Uh, ask my question. Answer, right. React, then I, read, then I ask my question. Okay. Go ahead. Um, we, for the Republic of Abazuja, we, don't, we don't need a written mandate from Cameroon. We need the Swiss government and the HD who says that they are capable of building an efficient platform that they are able to uh, bring come on that table. We need them to bring come on that table, period. If they put come on that table, then they have given us a mandate. 
they have shown us a mandate by bringing Cameroon to the table. Cameroon can issue a written document and they'll never show up. So that, that doesn't help the situation. So my, my, what I'm demanding from them is to bring Cameroon to the table. I'm giving them the benefit of doubt, hoping that they bring Cameroon to the table. Secondly, if they don't bring it, then they are failed. As simple as that. Now, secondly, um, uh, whether uh, uh, we are talking about whether we are not moving from the position of strength, we are not ready. I know the work that we in Rural Zonia are doing on the background that most people don't know in social media about our territory concerning the, uh, the details and the facts and uh, the team and the experts that we are able to put at our disposal in terms of mediation from the Republic of Perspective of Rural Zonia. We have been doing this kind of consultation before and we know we have been talking about these issues. When it comes it come to the we are very confident that nobody can beat us on that table. I mean, from Cameroon, nobody can beat us on that table. It is not, it is not, um, uh, 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 see, just, we know exactly what we are talking about. The leap that we are taking, we are not just taking a leap in the dark. We know exactly where we are heading to. And uh, uh, for, for everybody to generalize and say that, what I would like to, to see is that, let Amazonians come together in a kind of collaboration platform and let every group present what they have as a team, or what, what they let them have, what they have. Because the, the issue that we are facing in this region today is the lack of collaboration. You don't know what we have, and we don't know what you have, we don't know what you are doing. So um, that's why some people feel that we are not in the position of strength, others feel that they are in the position of strength. So if we can have a collaboration platform on this issue, and then we say, let every group present out there what they are prepared for the Brazilian people. It, 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 some kind of blueprint, what do you anticipate, what do you think? Maybe through that collaboration platform, we are going to, to, to figure out something better. When you are in a position of strength, when you are in a position of strength, the enemy will come to you, not you going to the, 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 the enemy. That is All right. the fact that we, our, uh, Sarko took a pen and wrote to the, the, the Swiss uh, ambassador, that is pure weakness. A position of strength, they will come to you and not you going to them. It doesn't necessarily mean that way. Thank, you thank can you also go to the enemy with position of strength. Um, um, I walk in my enemy's household and I tell him off, I show him exactly where my rights are. I walk out of his house. Uh, Goji, Goji, you said uh, the, the, HG, the HG will only prove to you that they have succeeded if they bring La Republic on the table. Period. Did they tell you they are going to bring La Republic on the table? Let them bring on the table. That's, that's the mandate I'm waiting from them. Did they tell you the objective is to bring La Republic on the table? That is the that is, that is good because the negotiation will never take place. Only one party sit on that table. The two parties have to sit at there, and then the state, that's what we are expecting. So if they cannot bring Cameroon on that table, then that's that. Then uh, they are failed. Yeah, th this this comes of falls in line with what Abu Free said at the beginning of the program. She said, um, uh, "HD and uh, that Switzerland had seen this as a f as a question of federalism." So, uh, do you, do you, don't you think uh, HD could be working towards building your minds and uh, dragging, pulling you towards federalism? No, that's not the case. I've been there for two meetings. There's nothing about federalism being discussed there. It has nothing to do with federalism. The All right, thing right there is restoration of our statehood. All right, thank you. Let us have a transition. That has been discussed out there. None of those guys sitting out there, neither Akwanga, neither Boebet, neither no, uh, all those guys who are sitting out there, none of them have been talking about federation. The issue out there is the restoration of our statehood. Good. So Thank you. Let us, let, let us have a discussion about what's going on. I know that it's all from social media. That's not true. Because if I was let sitting out there, I was thinking like, like, like we are taking today. When I went in there, I saw the areas where there were mistakes. I saw the areas where they needed to be corrected. I saw areas where they, which, which were not true, which, which uh, Gathered from information which are collected from a social media was totally the opposite. So um, we are working in Thank changing much, areas which we need to change, and that's where we are progressing. And we have to do that collectively, not without giving some other group outside giving some insight. All right. Thank you very much, Goji. Can we have a transition uh, pen? And uh, when we come back, when we come back, we will look at expert view on this. Hehehe. <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome back to this other section of the program. Uh, if you are just joining us, you are watching Term One Conversation, and we are analyzing uh, the prospects of having peace or having um, an independent Ambazonia through the Swiss mediation. So, um, Goji, uh, I know I ended with you, but let me come back to you. <clears throat> if what is happening in Switzerland is called capacity building, if what is happening in Switzerland is called capacity building, why don't you people send Ambazonia's experts in mediation, in international law, and in every other thing related to discuss with the people in, uh, with the people at HD? Why do you, the political leaders, actually go there? Um, let me tell you something. Before you get an expert to work for you, you have to have total knowledge, maybe not the details, of what you, you, are, you are asking for. You are the ones that are presenting the facts, some of the facts, or the direction to the expert, what you want them to achieve. If, I, if, I, if we go to a trial, you have to tell your lawyer, your, 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 your lawyer exactly um, where you are heading to. And the lawyer uses the facts based on develops the power of analysis and, uh, and know how to, to play with the facts much more to, to your advantage. It is important for leaders of Amazonia to understand the process. Because if you don't understand the process, somebody can sit right in front of the <coughs> call him an expert. And it blows up everything, not, not, in the, not in the fashion in which you are expected. You know, we now know that the world is dishonest, and uh, particularly this is our case. Uh, we need special attention on it, and we need to be follow up every detail of what the, the, the representatives are doing, every detail of what the experts are doing. So I would advise every Amazonian um, leader, if they cannot obtain capacity building from elsewhere or elsewhere, let them get, some, get themselves involved with some kind of capacity building. They must not be done by the Swiss. You can reject it. You can reject what the HD is providing to you. Not all the facts that they are preparing that are considered as anything because I've done my capacity building elsewhere as well. All right. So we have other, right. other experts you, talking to us, comparing you. facts together. You can hear what they are telling you about. You must not, you must not adhere to it. Thank you for that. Uh, Barista, uh, Mr. Goji has made a, uh, a statement that appears very curious to me. I'm curious about it. He says uh, we should rather go to them to, to build our capacities instead of um, like you need a lawyer. Isn't it appropriate that we get people we trust that is our own sons and daughters who are experts in this domain cut across the world to build our capacities or to represent us at these talks why should leaders who are not experts in this field go to talk expert issues with experts on the other side mm. uh, my understanding why they are involving the leaders is to uh, to get a buy-in in the process Imagine something, let's say you get the experts, they go and come out with some resolutions at the end. Then the leaders start refusing. They don't really understand what uh, 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 Barista, Barista, in this, in this situation, normally what happens should be a client-lawyer uh, relationship where the leaders are the clients and then they hire our own experts to go represent us face-to-face -face with other experts so that the buy-in can easily come on. The our experts can sit there with our own leaders while they talk. As such, we are sure that the information we are receiving is uh, objective information. To be honest, what, they, what, what HD is doing is not unique to us. In a lot of uh, 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 conflicts where you have a state party and you have a non-state party with so many different entities, before the process is going on into the mediation, they always try to build some capacity of the various leaders of the group. It's not something that HD invented on Ambazonia. It has happened in different conflicts before. So I don't want to over demonize the system. It might not be 100%, but it's not unique to us. It has happened before, not, they build capacity. It's not even the process of We are not in the process of demonizing the, 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 the whole initiative. We're in the process of identifying weaknesses and correcting them now before it gets too bad. Would you advise that someone we do not know and we do not know his interest in this issue take on to training our leaders? Why should we, our own experts like you, not train our leaders? Why should our leaders not call our own experts to come and train them? Is this not curious to you? 
to be honest, whoever is sponsoring this thing has given a budget. They are deciding how they use the budget. There is a part of the budget to train the people. Whether we take that training or not, it is up to us. They are not forcing anybody. The guys are saying exactly. they are offering this training. And it's in your interest to come together and get this training for free. If you want to go and get your training by yourself as well, by your own expert, you then they now grabs you. They, they might see you on the first day of actual negotiations. Nothing stops you. You might not go. It might be better for you to get your in-house training from your own guys. Who, who cares? No, uh, Barista, my, my question is not whether HD should give us this training. My question is this. Why uh -huh. should our leaders not come to our own experts? Why should our leaders trust external experts? Why can we not train ourselves? That if HD has said, okay, La Republic is ready to sit and talk with us, why should our leaders not say, okay, HD, hold on, let our leaders train us and we come there exactly for the negotiations and the mediation? Why should we go there for training? That, I'm a little bit curious about no, this. that. That you can. That is one of the options. You can choose that option. First of all, I don't really want to talk too much about training. I don't know the content of the training. Are they training on the subject matter or they are training on the negotiation process? Exactly. I don't know what they are talking about why, in those why meetings. Our leaders should come back to people like you. Uh, our people come back to you. Bro, let me clarify your question, please. Your question is, is too open. What a barrister is saying right now, he doesn't know the context in which the leaders have been trained. What is going out there, it is not training the leaders as experts. No, that's not what is happening. The, the, the training is to understand the process. It's not to understand, it's, it's not to have uh, the training of experts or whatever the case. No, it is on, to understand the process from the Swiss perspective, the platform which they are building, how the platform is going to look like and how are we going to adjust that platform. And that we are just building the platform. There's nothing like some kind of training which is going on there. Uh, uh, let, me, let, let me follow up with you. If there are procedural or very substantial flaws in that, in that build up, would, would non-experts be able to identify those are flaws? Flaws? Yes. Sorry. What do you call an expert? We of the Republic of Azonia, and we are able to identify flaws. Anything that would deviate from the restoration of our statehood is already a flaw. I disagree. Could you, uh, Goji, Goji, could you please stabilize, stabilize your camera, please? Pardon? Abu I'm coming to you. Goji, could you please stabilize your camera? It, yeah, it, the it, problem it, I have is um, uh, I'm not hearing you. I have to push it very close to my ear. Okay. And, uh, you know, because I don't know something, for some reason, my, the, the volume has just gone down. So okay. I need to bring it closer. That, that's the reason. All right. Um, before I come back to you, Goji, it's been, it's been a lot of ping pong between you and I. Uh, Abu Free, <laughs> since uh, the egg of sea decided not to engage this process, has the egg of sea been doing capacity building at their own end to make sure that if at some point they are going to join while the, while the procedural flaws have been fixed, egg of sea will be able to meet up with everything that is happening at, uh, at uh, the Swiss led initiative? Um, well, we have, absolutely, we had a capacity building um, um, initiative that was sometime in March, if I'm not mistaken, and um, we did invite all the other leaders, and that's, we, we did invite all the other leaders, um, which they, um, some of them, of course, rejected it. Um, yes, so we are engaged in capacity building, but um, I, I so want to respond to this expert thing, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, so the thing about, I'm, I'm not a, hey, I did political science, I did international relations, but I'm not going to call myself an expert because I have not practiced in that field. I am practicing in public health. Now, I will call myself a public health expert because I practice in that field. Um, but because I did political science and international relations with some conflict, res I have a, you know, with some conflict, resol uh, re uh, sorry, re conflict uh, resolution background, that doesn't make me an expert to go and sit down in an, you know, in a situation like this to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. Hell no, it doesn't. Now, the leaders that 
being the leader of the IG, being the leader of the AGOS, being the leader of Morris or SCYL, the new name, I don't, I don't know the new, or ACT, it doesn't make you an expert to go sit down and talk on the behalf of 8 million people. Absolutely not. What our leaders, and that is why I call them, you know, emasculated leaders, what they should have done is especially at the initial stage of this nobody's saying that they should not go do their swiss talk absolutely not hey whatever can push the ambazonia revolution forward let's you know take advantage of it however you are opening yourself to you're feeding yourself giving yourself for these people to feed on your vulnerabilities why not look for people that are more knowledgeable that are practitioners in the field of negotiation or mediation why not look for those kind of people send them forward to represent you hell no these people are not going to make any decision there they're not going to sit down there and make any decision there without consulting back with you it was important for these leaders to look for experts send these experts say hey go and represent us here Whatever feedback you get, bring it back to us and we'll make a decision from there. Now, they carrying themselves to that meeting, these leaders carrying themselves to that meeting, open up for their vulnerabilities to be tapped into. Hey, in a situation like this, you're on that city, on that um, whatever table that they have, or capacity building, teaching, whatever we all want to call it. You are so exposed. You can be forced to do things that you don't even want to do. You can be forced to <laughs> sign some documents that you don't want to be signed. So, for example, no, seriously, for example, look at the document that I don't know. I mean, I know that you all signed because John Barakuro clearly stated it, that you all signed that document. Which, which document? Can you please present a copy of that document? The soul, Swiss will be the sole negotiator in this process. So those are the kind of things that we are talking about. Can you present a copy of that document? We are talking about documents. We don't have put the document out there. Let's see what was signed. You all disprove us. It's not about no. You all have that opportunity to disprove what we are saying. So you all disprove us and show us the document. See, see let me say this, please. Um. Ah, uh, Goji, Goji, Goji. One, one, one second. I'm the master of this platform. <laughs> I, 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 I actually, I actually speech. <clears throat> Stay what you wanted to say. Um, when you talk about uh, we are not knowledgeable, that's why I say groups operate from a different angle, from a different perspective. And uh, we of the Republic of Zona will repeat this again and again and again. These issues you are talking about, uh, mediation, these are issues we are foreseen years ago. Some people think we are just silent in this revolution. These are the kind of issues we have been working on in the background. Not necessarily to get statistics details about our nation, how to go into a process that is going to, to uh, if in case such a process uh, uh, shows up, how are we going to represent ourselves? These are the issues we have been working on. I'm saying that we are having a top firm that has gone why don't, why don't you send a top Amazonia. firm why don't you send a top firm to go talk with the experts on the other side why don't yeah. you send a top firm yeah. to go talk with the experts at hd that is we my are problem. in communication with our experts we are not don't go in there and like fools we are in communication with our experts details of what is going on there so we have when, when, the, when the time we reach when we need the experts to go before and sit the experts will take over that position the leaders right now I'm not going to play the roles of the role of the expert. None of those guys you see out there is going to play the role of an expert. No, the, the, the initial process is to understand the uh, the, uh, the the Swiss process as a whole. What is what is going to, to build I the Swiss process, the platform I, to understand I that hope. this is what we need. This is what we need. We need an expert. We need this. We need that. We need this, and and and, and so on. This is that is the, I that's I the initial process. I am I am hoping that the viewers I am hoping that the viewers are understanding um Sorry. what the leaders are doing there because personally I have not yet understood that difference. Um uh, Barista Tumasan, yeah. viewers, viewers are asking some questions that, that keep recurring. Why is it that HD is only training Ambazonian leaders? Why are they not training leaders from Cameroon? Uh from my understanding is that when you are dealing with a, a state party and a non-state actors the international assumption is that the state party has capacity already 
That is the assumption, whether it's correct or not. So they are looking at, guys, let's say you are going to negotiate with Savimbi in the bush there in Angola. You don't know what capacity he has. So you have to assemble here and these guys, try to explain what mediation is, explain the process you are running. Your process might be different from that of somebody else. Explain how you will do the things with them. But most of the time, they don't go and train state parties because they assume you have the resources and you have the capability to, you have your capability already. So that's why they, they always go to the site of training the non-state parties. Is that, a, is that a possibility of Ambazonia defining themselves at the international scene and telling um, whosoever that we know what we are doing, we have the capacity of doing what we are doing, all we need is sit on that side, we sit on this side, La Republic sits on that side and we talk about this issue? Can Ambazonia do that? Exactly. Exactly. You can say what you want. They are not forcing them to come for this free negotiation or free mediation talks. They are going there, they, they encourage them to come, but they are not forcing them. If you don't want, you don't come. The budget they've allocated for that part, they just keep it that aside. They are not forced to go there. You can go there and walk out. Some people have walked out. You cannot go at all. That's why I'm saying I don't see, I don't have a problem with uh, Ayaba and his group not going. It is not a mandatory to go. The day negotiations start, maybe I have a demand, the rest can join on that day. It is possible. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You are not mandated here. It's not a must that you must go. So you might go, you might not go. It's not, I mean, it, it's neither here nor there. All right, we're coming to the end of the program. And uh, I would just like to have one last word from every panelist. Let me start with Goji. Can you give us one last word, please? Um... I want the Ambazonia people to understand that uh, the Republic, they are well represented. And uh, from the experience which I've gathered in that place is that all the leaders that they are castigating to on social media, and uh, these guys are doing their best for the interest of Ambazonia people, that there's no other agenda for discussion other than the restoration of our statehood. And uh, I want to let Amazonians to know that uh, if you are not participating in that process, you will not be able to understand the the the, the, the junk that is out there on social media and Thank all you. the accusations, false accusations that are out there on social media. It is good to come in as an observer. And as an observer, you are not bound by any legal agreement. And you can still come out and disagree with what you have seen than to sit on social media and gather information that is flaring from left, right, and center, fabricated information, and blackmail the entire process and, black, and, and go about sabotaging or destroying the character of so many people. This is not right. It's destroying the revolution. As uh, Barrister... Uh, thank, you, th thank you very much. This was, just a, this, was just the last, this was just the last word. We are at the end of the program, and uh, it may be cut off at any time. So um, I would try as much as possible to bring those who, are in the pro those who are in the process and those who have been there from the beginning on the program so they can actually talk and answer these questions you call intoxication on, on our social media. Uh, Barrister, can you give us your last word, please? <clears throat> um, my opinion is that the Swiss process, we should try to see whether we can correct the flaws and push the people there in HD to answer all the questions that we have. And if the process now is upgraded to an acceptable level, then we all come together and be there. But mm -hmm. those who are insisting without going that they need some answers, I don't think they are sabotaging the process. They are playing their own part. A lot of the things will be corrected in that process because some people are refusing to come because of ABC. So I believe Seseko Ayaba and the rest who don't know in there, they are playing their part by insisting on certain things. So at the end of the day, maybe we come together and the system works. Maybe we find a new system, I don't know. But I'm not too much believing that we should stop everything and say we are not yet ready in terms of military gains on the ground, spend another five, 10 years to fight and become stronger, then go for negotiation. I don't think uh, we have that luxury. We can start now and see how it goes. To be honest, that this mediation will fail. I don't see the Republic coming to see the land to come and give us independence. I'm not, I'm not on Tramadol. I'm going there knowing it will fail. We would insist on independence. They cannot give independence. So we'll have a deadlock. The system fails. The international community will finally realize that these two people cannot come together and agree to stay together. 
Therefore, we should start looking at the next option of people, each person going their separate ways. That's my interest in this user land. To put the best case and we don't agree, and then the world know that these two people cannot agree to stay together. Then they start going to option B. It's better for everybody to go their way. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, let's end with uh, Abu Free. Can you give us your last word? Ah, comrade um, Thomas, and I love you for what you just said. It's gonna fail. Um, <laughs> I'm not wishing for that to happen, anyways. But um, no, like, and, and la, la, la Republic, you know, La Republic is has built a B base in Mabanda Kumba. I'm sure most of us have heard of that. They are right now building vigilante proxy groups all over Amazonia. You have, you know, vigilantes everywhere, and um, some of our leaders are. Um, you know, begging for negotiation. I personally call that treason. I'm sorry. I, it's harsh, but seriously, I think it's some kind of a betrayal to the Amazonian people who are putting their lives on the ground and fighting and struggling so that all of us should have a free Amazonia. Um, we cannot be begging the same people that are trying to kill and annihilate the entire zone. It doesn't make sense at all. So, um, but they, for those on the ground, you all stay safe, keep on doing what you're doing, and we are strongly behind you. Thank you, um, dear host. Thank you very much, uh, dear viewers. Thank you for tuning in and watching this program. And uh, before we sign off, you have been watching 10 One Conversation. And uh, just as a prior announcement, beginning, mon beginning Monday, the 28th of October, we are going to organize a call in program. And uh, we're going to select a time when we're going to talk and uh, let people call in. That program is going to run every Monday. So stay tuned on SCBC and on our platform for this information so your voices can be heard from wherever you are. Thank you very much. You have been watching 10-1 Conversation and the appointment is next week, same time, 7 p.m. Amber time on both our platform and on SCBC TV. Thank you and see you then. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat>